a very warm welcome to all of you to today's curtain raiser press conference before the 11th national conference of aid society of india or 11th asicon which opens tomorrow in bengaluru on the theme of as you see it's written there breaking barriers for health hope and healing this press conference or rather press briefing is being streamlined live on facebook <coughs> as well as via zoom online session and so i welcome all those who are not present in this room but they have logged on from different parts of the world uh, let us not forget that we are just one month away from world aids day which uh, which will which is held on 1st of december and today we have on our panel distinguished ex hiv experts not only from india but from other countries as well uh, we have with us dr ishwar gilada one of india's first and longest serving doctors in hiv treatment and care he is president of aid society of india or asi and he is also the president of 11th asicon <coughs> i am happy to share that he was elected for the governing council of international aid society or ias this year and he joins just three indians who have been elected to isgc he being one of them then we have with us dr glory alexander founder and director of asha she is co chair of 11th asicon and she is also recipient of dr bc roy national award for 2010 Dr G D Ravindran professor of medicine at St John's National Academy of Health Sciences and co-chair of 11th Asicon then our foreign guest Dr Kogi Naidu head of the HIV and TB treatment program at Caprisa Caprisa stands for Center for AIDS program of research in South Africa and Dr Nirupma Sista from USA she is director for HIV prevention trials network more commonly known known as hptn which is a worldwide collaborative clinical studies network that develops and tests the safety and efficacy of interventions designed to prevent hiv dr sista leads the development and implementation of all ongoing hptn research studies welcome everyone i now request dr ishwar gilada president of the 11th asicon to give his experts comments and moderate the session Uh, basically, whenever you organize a conference or a meeting, you are bound to say that this is very important because of this this reason. And uh, we have been doing that for last ten years, but uh, ten conferences. This eleventh one, but actually speaking, one of the best developments which could have happened to any country has happened in the last one and a half year. Uh, HIV AIDS uh, Prevention and Control Bill, 2014. and before that there were several bills in different names and shapes they have been pending for last 2.5 to 3 decades none of the bill was passed this is this bill was passed in 2017 uh, in february and uh, april in rajya sabha and lok sabha and now it has become a act so is a hiv aids act 2017 now why we require act when there are sane people everywhere and a lot of activities are happening government is there we requires certain things for minority most of the laws are for minority they are never for majority here minorities are people living with hiv aids they should be given honorable and dignified treatment and they should not be subjected to discrimination and human rights violation and uh, knowingly unknowingly this was happening uh, in families in society and in government circles or in uh, hospitals by way of not providing them treatment or to providing them treatment at double the cost or triple the cost uh, deliveries or surgeries uh, were not done to them or um, somewhere there was somebody is writing hiv positive on case paper that goes everywhere that will all stop now and violators whether is a doctor or healthcare worker or a owner of a hospital or establishment they will be penalized with 2 years of imprisonment uh, hiv aids was in a negative list for doing any health insurance that is being removed from there hiv uh, positive people they were not getting any medi claim that is now removed from there so all these provisions are in that act so this is on one side that the legally system is becoming stronger on the other hand the government of india which usually used to take one year five years 10 years time uh, behind the schedule all over the world within couple of months they decided we abide by test and treat test and treat means 
if you are testing people with for hiv for di different reasons in pregnancy or childhood or anywhere or clinical cases and they found positive start treatment earlier treatment was for 200 cd4 count to 50 350 500 but now over the years all over the world they realize that prevention is important prevention can be done through preventive campaigns condom usage no sex etc but major prevention has happened because of treatment so you treat a patient with hiv the treatment the person becomes undetectable undetectable is untransmittable so the worldwide principle is making people undetectable as early as possible so they don't transmit the other major importance that in india hiv transmission is mainly heterosexual heterosexual means <coughs> women get involved without their risk uh, conversely speaking or obviously speaking out of 100 men infected 97 98 are infected on their own count through, through their sexual activity but out of 100 women infected 97 to 98 are infected by their husbands so in a society where uh, multisex is there all over the world but here is only one sided multisexual society male side so if you treat them and make them undetectable then women will be automatically saved in africa which kogi will say that it is a uh, double circles of infection if husband says i have four wives wife says i have five husbands that kind of equality so there it is very difficult task because no one knows who is promiscuous how many uh, times they are doing promiscuity in india fortunately that much uh, sexual activity is not there from female side and that has shown that by doing good uh, treatment we are preventing infection other most important thing which now government realize after uh, all over the world people started saying that we are accessing indian medicines 92% of the world's people living with hiv they are taking indian arvs i have been traveling to africa uh, since 2000 too many times like 2000 2005 i must have gone 50 times during that time people used to die like ants in africa now, now people are not dying people are being saved they are being uh, saving a person with hiv is not only saved from hiv a person with HIV may get tuberculosis, will cough and spread tuberculosis to others. But if you uh, treat well in advance, that person will not get tuberculosis, so you are preventing tuberculosis and many other infections. So that morbidity and mortality can be prevented. Now, importance of such a meeting is taking this talk, what India has done in the last one and a half year. Earlier, we used to always criticize government, that government is not with us. Now, government is with us. Uh, for the first time, the National AIDS Control Organization had issued the order that anybody who is attending from ART centers, their expenses will be paid by their respective state societies, which never happened earlier. So this kind of change where public-private partnership is in reality happening. And this is the only national conference where three days uh, all activities are done and they are updated with knowledge. People are coming from different parts of the world. Who's who from India, they are there. And most important other thing is, if you see your brochure, we print in a bold that no alcohol and no um, smoking is a conference policy. This we started in 2005. And people are telling us mad that Indian medical conference is just saying without alcohol, how it will happen? And it happened so much so that today Medical Council of India and different pharma companies, they have made a dictat, no alcohol will be served. So we are in a thought wearer in that sense. By this way, we are bringing people together only for academic feast. There's a lot of interaction with that. The very wise people, they have worked in their countries in a very uh, nice way and they have shown the demonstration project which are successful. So we are not doing any kind of experimentation. We are trying to work which are only workable project and can be multiplied in different places. So otherwise uh, my colleagues will introduce each other and also talk. Uh, let's start with Kohi. Um, good afternoon everybody. So um, can we have a motion? Yeah. Uh, yes. I'm really pleased and to be can be invited to be a part of this really important um, meeting. Um, it's heartwarming to hear the amazing strides <coughs> that India has made, both with um, legislation protecting the rights of people living with HIV, as well as, uh, as, well as embracing the latest clinical guidelines around it test and treat. Um, a conference such as this is always very rich with scientific exchange 
It's rich with people who are like-minded coming together to collectively improve their clinical practice. South Africa, very much like India, is in the midst of a heterosexual HIV epidemic. We have 7.4 million people that are infected with HIV and about 4.4 million people um, that are already on antiretroviral therapy. The push for antiretroviral therapy came about also with the test and treat policy that WHO released in 2015. And South Africa took up in September 2016. Uh, we have faced a twin epidemic of tuberculosis, and I always like to see tuberculosis highlighted in HIV in meetings for, uh, that, that discusses the clinical issues related to HIV because both diseases go together. HIV is very often silent upon, up upon the time that patients become symptomatic, and it's usually with tuberculosis. And tuberculosis is easily transmissible, and it reverses the clinical wellness that an individual feels. It drives them to seek health care. And so having TB signs and symptoms and knowing how to diagnose, knowing how to treat, prevents unnecessary morbidity and mortality in individuals with HIV. Um, so I must, uh, it's a big public health issue back in South Africa. And if we're not careful, it can be similarly important here in India because of the issues of poverty, and the issues of um, congregate settings where large numbers of people cluster together, causing uh, facilitating transmission of tuberculosis. I'm really pleased to have been invited to share some of our insights around uh, integrating TB and HIV, and I look forward to the scientific exchange that's going to come through over the next couple of days. Thank you. Dr. Nirupama, sister. Uh... Good afternoon, uh, I'm Dr. Nirupama, sister. I have been fortunate to have come to the ASICON meetings for many years now, and every year the, the quality of presentations, the quality of uh, young investigators who presented the data, present data has just been remarkable. And really, uh, as uh, Dr. Naidu mentioned, this confluence of international and Indian investigators all working, all brainstorming to control this epidemic um, is really heartwarming and also very uh, optimistic. Uh, my role is, I, I actually I lead, I'm part of a network of investigators all over the world um, that is primarily involved in evaluating new interventions to prevent HIV. As Dr. Gilada mentioned, the first and foremost way of trying to prevent HIV is to treat the HIV infected individual and in fact the the basis of treatment is prevention um, was one of the studies that actually um, convinced the WHO and other normative uh, bodies to have that guideline uh, was a study that was conducted by the HPTN called HPTN 052. This was a study in zero discordant couples. So one person was positive, their partner was negative and when they treated the positive partner the, there was a 96% reduction in transmission to, the, to their negative partner. That study was conducted in India as well, in, in, at uh, YRG Care in Chennai and at National AIDS Research Institute in Pune. Um, and on the basis of that now, there are many other studies we are eva evaluating using that approach, treatment as prevention. Um, treatment, of course, is also beneficial for the individual, as many studies have shown, um, particularly when it comes to, again, the uh, uh, intersection between HIV and TB. It's very important that uh, the individual gets treated for HIV as well. But in addition, I think uh, we are also evaluating interventions that an uninfected person can use so that they can protect themselves. Uh, again, as Dr. Naidu mentioned, in a generalized epidemic like in Africa, many, and, and Dr. Gilada also mentioned that, women really are um, often at the vulnerable to HIV infection and have no ways of controlling. It's not easy to negotiate safe sex. It's not always easy to even have, bring up the topic of HIV and say, I don't trust my partner. But if they were um, allowed interventions that are effective and discreet, then they can control themselves. They can control their own health and their HIV status. So the HPTN has been involved in many of those 
kinds of interventions and um, we are hopeful that this conference also I, we can have those kind of discussions and I'll be presenting on that as well. Yeah. Dr. Glory is our local chair. Now, one of the most uh, tragic and poignant outcomes of the HIV epidemic has been children getting infected with HIV and AIDS. And 90% um, of children below the age of 15 years who are HIV positive have got it from their mothers. And you know how the mothers have got it. The mothers have got it from their husbands. And when they become pregnant, they can transmit the infection to the child, either during the pregnancy itself, uh, during labor and delivery, or during breastfeeding. And then children who are born HIV positive remain HIV positive for the rest of their life in the current setting. And therefore it impacts all areas of their life. They have a very sick childhood. They become, you know, education. So many things matter. And 50% of children die by the age of two years if they don't have treatment. But the fact that we can now provide antiretroviral therapy to these mothers during their pregnancy, it's imperative that all mothers who are, who are, who are pregnant should be tested for HIV. And if they are positive, then they are started on treatment. Uh, as early as possible in pregnancy. And this treatment is continued throughout pregnancy, labor delivery, breastfeeding period, and lifelong, so that the mothers are alive to take care of their babies. And this has been a very effective treatment because it's been able to bring down the risk of transmission from 25 to 45% to less than 1% in a mother who's on treatment and becomes pregnant. Less than 2% in a mother who is, um, uh, less than 5% in a mother who started on treatment during her pregnancy. The other thing is that even in those children who are born HIV positive, because we can put them on ART, these children can now lead fairly normal lives. And we have got youngsters who were diagnosed positive at age one, two, three, who've been started on ART, who have now reached uh, adulthood. We have children who are now 24, 25 years old who've completed their BCOMs, engineering, and uh, who've been able to take up jobs. We have a couple of them who've also got married. And so we have the second generation children who are now getting married. And we know that those children will be negative because the mothers are on ART. So, so the same who were born positive who were born positive. So what I'm trying to say is how ART has made the single most important difference in the lives of people living with HIV today. You know, it's um, within a box they can lead a normal life. Prevention of mother to child transmission is my area of interest. So we are working with mothers who are HIV positive and we put them on treatment. In India, it's a huge challenge uh, because if you prevent a mother from passing the infection to her newborn child, you're actually eliminating pediatric HIV infection. And that has happened in many countries in the world, about 11 or 12 countries in the world have been able to eliminate pediatric HIV infection, two among them being Thailand and uh, Cuba. You have a whole lot of other smaller countries which have been able to do that. India, it is a big challenge because in India, we have 30 million pregnancies occurring every year. And hidden in these 30 million pregnancies are 22,677 HIV positive women that we have to identify and treat if you want to eliminate uh, 2017. This is estimates, HIV estimates of NACO, National AIDS Control Organization, released in 2017. So when we look at the state of Karnataka, they say there are 1,951 women who are HIV positive. But in 2017, we've been able to identify 1,421 women and put them on treatment in the state of Karnataka. Two, one. Uh, one, four, two, one. But estimate in Karnataka is 1951. Okay, so there are over 500 Yes, We've, it's about 70% coverage and the whole aim is to try and identify everybody. It's a huge challenge. The government is trying its best and being complemented by work of other doctors in the private sector and NGOs and all of us put together. Yeah.
it was ಸೋಸೈಟಿ ಸಬ್ಡ್ಯೂಡ್ So, HIV also, HIV monsoon in the north is not so much. Whenever we tried doing contests in the north, we, we did first in Delhi, this was not so good. We came to Jaipur, it was not so good. We came to Hyderabad, very good. We went to Lucknow, it was not so good. We came to Bangalore, very good. We went to Calcutta, not so good. So, now we are rotating contests only in the south because uh, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra, Tam- uh, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, these states have uh four states have 30% of the country's population but 60 to 70% of country's hiv so hiv caring population uh, hiv work anything innovative anything new anything in volume is happening in these four five states so when we take a conference somewhere else then lock stock barrel people have to travel from here so their interest to go there goes down so what do you think the state is failing to do in terms of the target group? You see, we cannot blame any particular state or their activity, but basically uh, what happens is interest in health is much less in any developing country, not this one, because the other issues are very important. Finance is very important. Roads are very important. Water is very important. But health doesn't get that importance. Fortunately, the health budget, which used to be 0.3% of national budget, that has gone to almost 2% now. But that needs to be further escalated. In the health... is what 0.3% of national budget was a health budget uh, about 10 15 years back it has gone to 2.1% so seven times budget has increased so this is only health no health, health. 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 so health doesn't get importance and in health the importance goes to the uh, infections or diseases which have more mortality like in volumes so people who talk about cardiac diseases or road accident or diabetes or the hypertension problem that people are more number of people are suffering or number of people are dying the ramifications related to hiv uh, firstly it is neglected secondly it is stigmatized uh, thirdly nobody in the private sector will come forward and say that i'm starting uh, this hospital in the name of my father who died of hiv but they may start a hospital in name of father if it is a cardiac problem or a cancer problem so that kind of stigma and then Uh, is a, India is a land with perennial elections. Anywhere election, a lock, stock, barrel, everything, in, including a health officials are posted in the election. So the program goes down. The good thing, what is happening, another thing I mentioned to forgot, uh, forget, uh, forgot to mention is the convergence of TB HIV program. Earlier, they used to have a vertical program, TB national vertical program, national HIV vertical program. Now they converge. By doing that, they will save a lot of cost on officials, establishments, and by 
a lot of people with HIV, they have tuberculosis. A lot of people with tuberculosis, they have HIV. Similarly, hepatitis B and C, they are uh, orphan program. Everywhere, test is done. Hepatitis B, HIV, and HCV, all tests are done. Hepatitis C is completely curable. The cost of treatment is so cheap, which is costing $84,000 per patient abroad. It is to $5,300 in India. Hep C. Hep C. It is 1,000, I mean, 18,000 rupees for the whole course. And which is $1,000 per tablet abroad. $1,000 per tablet. It's three months course. Ah, yeah, three months course. And Hep C is completely vaccine preventable. Vaccine no, cost no, is hep not. B, hep B. No, Hep B. I'm saying Hep B is completely vaccine preventable. And the cost of vaccine is not 50 rupees or 100 rupees. Even a commercial cost is not more than 100 rupees. So if you are testing in a large volume, you know hundreds of people are Hep C, uh, Hep B positive. There is no treatment available for Hep B. But if Hep B is negative, you are, should provide vaccine. We are not doing that. So the highest uh, money is spent or effort is spent on collection of blood sample and testing. You know the test, but you are not doing vaccination. All childhood vaccination programs are now covered hepatitis B. But adults which are like us, they are not covered for hepatitis B vaccination. By taking three vaccines, we are prevented for hepatitis B for whole life. And if a person has HIV and hepatitis B both, the person's chances to transmit hepatitis B are 100 times more than HIV. So people are not bothered. So now we are asking for convergence of hepatitis B, hepatitis C along with HIV. And that is going to happen. So by having this convergence program, then the program will be stronger. The more people will be interested. And program will be run very well. Otherwise, currently, vertical program, there is no national hepatitis C control program. There is no hepatitis C control program. But if they are with HIV, they will be automatically controlled. So hepatitis program, TB and HIV. Yeah, all, all convergence. Uh, the state has procured more number of CD4 machines. No, there is a problem with that because now the guidelines have changed. What we need is viral load machines. Viral load. Because what we need is total suppression of viral loads. Yeah. And fun. Yeah. So viral load machines. The problem with these viral load machines is we are buying the machines, but we do not have personnel to operate these machines. Uh, yeah, in the ART centers. And so, because of that, I, and what, what changes happened in one year till last year, entire country in the government program only 16,000 wire loads were done per year. 16,000, one six. This year, they escalated to 10 times more 160,000. They have ordered for 600, uh, roughly around 600. And they made a public machines. partnership with a company, company where the test is done at very low cost. But what is the requirement? 10 times more than that. You need Minimum, if, even if you do once in a year, you need 16 lakh viral load per patient uh, per year. Uh, can you, Dr. Rabindran, can you just elaborate on this? Why, why is the need for viral load testing so important? And also, uh, from uh, the perspective of the state, as a doctor, what do you think? What are the problems the patients are feeling or what, what problems are being felt to control the epidemic and stop the new infections? Because the, that's a big uh, issue. And well, something more about viral load testing. Why we, is it important? We talked about uh, HPT uh, uh, 052 study that showed prevention, giving antiretroviral medications prevents sexual transmission of the disease. Before this study came, we always talked about saying uh, you give antiretroviral medications, the infection may be controlled, but sexual transmission we are not sure. But this is the first time it showed. The study was I, I'm not I'm quoting off this thing in my mind. They did like 1,800 couples and they had 29 couples who were positive. 17. And, what? 17. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, 17, whatever. 29 couples were positive and all 29. And what the study did was very simple. They started patients immediately after uh, they were diagnosed as HIV positive. And they started other group of people who were started on HIV medications when the national guideline was 34 of 200 or 350, whatever was the local guideline was attained. And they found they had 29 infections, and all the 29 infections were in people who started the HIV ART late. late. Okay, and then they went further and found out that the concentration of the viruses in their seminal and vaginal fluids is very, very low to progress transmission. Since then, transmission uh, prevention of HIV is to treat the patient, and that's why we changed our policies. We had the 1990 uh, policy of the WHO which said treat. Test and treat all the patients. 
And the way you know that a person is effectively treated is to have the viral load suppressed completely. We have the treat on policy of one year. It's just two years now. Do you, do you see any change in the... Yeah, yeah quite, quite fast changes are happening. And earlier, uh, people with HIV, they used to go in euphoria. That my CD4 is so much and it went up. But they never knew the viral load because viral load was not done. Now, it has become an incentive also for them. Look, your virus has come near your control. Surprise. You take it properly, it will come undetectable. And then because in a couple setting where one is infected, one is not infected, the, uh, the uh, person who is not infected also insists that you take medicine so that I'll be prevented. So that is started happening. And then there are pregnancies happening without <coughs> HIV. Uh, uh, like the, we used to promote HIV positive, positive marriages. And we have done several, but now the more marriages are happening in positive and negative. They come and say that we know that HIV is not going to be infected, uh, so much infectious. So a person is going to take treatment. So from husband to wife, infection is not happening. Wife to child, infection is not happening. So that way, that major prevention has happened because of this good treatment. And able to show that viral load is so much undetectable. Yeah, that's reason. Add to that. The other thing is that before the guidelines were, the future guidelines were that if the CD4 is below 200, you treat the patient. Then it became below 350, you treat the patient. So we started treating patients with ART only when the viral codes were low. I mean, CD4 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 counts were low. So we were using CD4 count as a monitoring tool. When the CD4 count went up on ART, we knew that the patient was responding to treatment. But now with this test and treat policy, the CD4 counts are normal. So the only monitoring tool we have is a viral load. So that's the other reason why there is the shift to viral load. And like Dr. Gilada and Dr. Ravindran said, if your viral load is undetectable, you're not going to transmit the infection to anybody. So undetectable, untransmissible. So you think that the health department or the government has got a goal sort of misfocused of they're always concentrating on CD4. No, 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 no. The government is not change right. Change completely. Yeah. See, because you need to know that viral load. If the viral load is negative and it starts by even by a thousand copies, then you know that drugs are not working. Then you change the drugs. Mm -hmm. When you look at the CD4, if the CD4 will fall after the viral load goes to very high level. So you detect the patients who are very frequent later. So the, this cost goes up for the institution. So you try to detect the patients as early as possible by doing a viral load. I think I was just going to say, I think that focus on CD4 used to be, as all of the doctors have said, when the normative guidelines were that you don't treat patients until that CD4 falls lower than 200 first, then 350. But after HPT and 052, and after the WHO guidelines got changed, that's not the, the gatekeeper anymore. You start as soon as somebody is tested and is positive. The other thing that happened to this uh, thing also, there was a study called the START study where we used CD4. Then, or, uh, CD, it is something that is evolved. Remember, it's HIV is only 30 years old. Yeah. There was a, a study called the START study, START study, Start. where they started the patients on HIV and uh, antiretroviral medication as soon as they were detected as positive and they took another group. Where they started treatment after yeah, after the CD4 fell to less than 500, and they discovered people who had started earlier had less of other complications, like for example, heart attacks was lower, non-communicable diseases were lower. In, or, in the early treatment group, early treatment group, and that changed the whole concept in the last three years, mm -hmm. where we say suppress the virus, patient will be alright. When did it start? When did it start? When did it, start? it was I think 2016. Yeah. 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 So I think Samar mentioned that uh, there are more than 1.5 lakh uh, patients in Karnataka who are uh, uh, lost to treatment, whether they have been getting treatment in negative or not. But isn't there a system in Karnataka where we should be able to go back to the No, the ERT centers do that. Uh, how much do you prevent at the beginning with the virus protest? Yes. No, I, yes, I agree no, with no. you. The, 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 this 1990 comes in picture. The current philosophy or the WHO goal is 1990. Hmm. First 90 means uh, uh, detect 90% 90 people which are infected with HIV. So if there are 100 people infected in Karnataka, 90 should know their status. 
out of those who know their status 90% of that should be put on art and 90% of those which are on art should have suppressed viral load so even if you 90 90 90 100% is achieved still it will be 73% achievement it was 90% of 90% of 90% and currently if you calculate that our achievements are not even 30% because it is 70% is our Detection. Because uh, 40 uh, 40 percent people, 50 percent people do not know their status. Out of 70 percent is our actual uh, initial detection. No, less than 70 percent. So we talk about 70 rather than 90, 70, uh, 20 less there. Then out of them, another 60 percent, 70 percent are on treatment. So it is 70 percent of 70 percent is 49, and out of which maybe half are uh, suppressed, yes. half are not suppressed because viral loads are not done. So what we are now instead of 90, 90, 90, we are at 70 um, or less than 70. We, we have we are uh, with the government admission 70, 70, 50. 70, 70, 49. Yeah, 49, 50. Yeah. So uh, if you calculate all that, our achievement is. Out of 70, 50, we have detected uh, 70, uh, 70 percent of the 70 are on ART. Yeah. That is a good. Yeah, yeah. That is good. Yeah. Miss, and there is escalated in the last one year or one and a half year. Currently, what they are saying is 2.1 million people are infected in the country. Out of which 1.4 to 1.5 million people know their status. Out of which 1.1 are on treatment. So currently 50% are, are on treatment. Out of those which are on treatment, the estimated 50% are suppressed. 50% are not suppressed. Now the issue of viral load has come in picture now recently very important because now we have other tools. Earlier the second line option, medicines were expensive. Not many people are taking that. The one very good drug which has come called Dolutegravir. D O L U L U T E G R A V I R V I R Dolute Gravir. And this Dolute Gravir is such a drug. Earlier we used to talk about undetectable viral load, means person's virus should come down to below 30, below 32 or four. This drug is in our government distribution system. No. No, not yet. It's going to come. It will come. Probably they will announce here. They're going to come because dolutegravir is such a drug which can bring the patient to T and D. That is target not detected. If you put a virus of the uh, virus count of the person, virus is not detected. So this comes test is positive because one is antibody test. The, the, the drug comes no, no it's single it's dose. A, powerful a, drug. How many drugs? Fifty milligrams. Milligram. Very small tablet. And the uh, thing is, so it's it's produced by. Uh, Produced by VIV, V I I V globally, V I I V. This is a conglomerate of four or five multinational agencies. VIV. They have given a voluntary license to an Indian company called MQR. And through this voluntary license, this drug, which is supposed to cost two thousand five hundred dollars per patient per month, is less than fifty dollars per patient per month. It is being marketed in India also. Yeah, it's marketed in India for the last one year. And when you no, look at yeah, Arvind, there are two companies. Doctor, you no, mentioned at the, the beginning huh. that HIV AIDS patients in India, uh, they cannot get relief on the medical aid. What about the new uh, PM's uh, J scheme? Uh, can they get some sort of relief? Uh, uh, PM like Yojana. No, not <laughs> up till now, but now they should have one directive just one week before. One week before. So we need a test case for somebody to have HIV AIDS and claim the thing. Then only we know what's going on. What, what does that notification say? That uh, you cannot discriminate somebody and uh, deny them uh, insurance, whether it's a life insurance or any other insurance. So this is one of the standard exclusions under the policy. Yes. Huh? No, 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 sir. So so you have to remove that. No. no. No, that's what, sir. Now what the, the change that has taken place is AIDS will be covered. But you will have to pay a small extra fee. Extra. You have to copy the notification. I will send you. I will send you. And uh, secondly, what is another important thing? What Dr. Ravindran said that because of early treatment, other complications are not there, like heart problem, etc. So what we are seeing in our patient, if a husband, wife coming or brother, brothers coming, one of them is infected, other is not infected. The uninfected person is dying, or he died, and infected person is alive. Why? Because a person who is infected, he is in constant check. When they come, we don't only check for HIV. We check for other side effects like liver function, test, renal function, test, cardiac function, and anything we treat. But the person who is negative, they don't take anything. But in I this country... To my question, sir. We are saying that 61,000 infections are uh, seen every year. 
69. Yeah, this year. Yeah. Earlier, last year it was 100, 100,000. Last year it was 87,000. 89, 89. 87,000 new infections, 2017. We have a question from yeah. the yeah. Okay. In terms of the percentage of population, uh, what is the percentage of the population? It's 0.5%. 0.2%. 0.2%. 0.2%. 0.2%. 0.2%. 0.2%. 0.2%. 0.2%. 0.2%. 0.2%. 0.2%. 0.2%. 0.2%. 0.2%. 0.2%. 0
So let's okay. first talk about the treatment because that's what he was talking about. So there are now new drugs that could be used as injectables where they can maintain the uh, suppression, as Dr. Gilada mentioned, combination of two injections, mm -hmm. two drugs that can be injected. Okay. Then you don't have to take a, drug, a pill every day. Those studies are going on with two drugs that can be both formulated as an injection. Yeah. What are these two drugs? The yeah. one drug is cabotegravir, and the other one is rilpivirine, R I L P I B I R I N. And those studies are almost complete, and yeah. pretty soon will become probably the a couple of months. You know, yeah. Then now we are talking of pro that is for treatment of already HIV. Yeah. Those are already already people. positive, taking treatment for many years. Virus load is suppressed for the last two years, and they are tired of taking daily medicine. Okay, stop the medicine. Take injection once in a month or once in two months. Yeah. Doctor, we have heard about but, some. We have read about some new uh, treatments and therapies which are based on the human immunological response. Yes, that's the latest. Drug. For some that's the latest drug that has been released in the market, and it's not available in India. Okay. Okay. Very so, expensive. Okay. <laughs> which is uh, recently that is expensive. These are antibodies. So these are. Yeah, so these are. Yes, yeah, so. No, they're all research being researched. So these are. Yes, so they're known as the biologics. They're being. Yes. Yes. So these agents are called biologic agents. So where the body itself makes these substances called antibodies, and they now know from within and they counteract. Um, the immunologic suppression as a result of HIV. It's all under study at the moment. There's nothing that's been uh, approved for, for oh, use. Oh, Just to complete the story yeah, about I new agents yeah. um, for treatment of HIV. So we've heard about the injectables. There's also implants. So these are long-acting drugs like tenofovir alafenamide that gets uh, put into the skin, just underneath the skin. So we recognize the fatigue from taking pills every day. And over time, that fatigue will translate to non-adherence to therapies. So now the research endeavors are to find alternate strategies so we don't rely on behavior to swallow pills. So long acting injectables, subdermal implants, um, the antibody infusion. So these are all alternate strategies that are going to be coming into the field. And a point of clarification on the dolutegrava, it's not a single pill. It still has to be taken in combination with two other pills. So it's not that you gotta take one pill and it'll cause this not detectable virus. It will be taken with the current first line, WHO first line, which is tenofovir and entricitabine. And together, it's very potent for suppressing the virus. And fortunately, India has done a pill which is combining all three drugs in one pill. It's called TLD, tenofovir, lamiodine, and dolutegravir. So person is taking only one pill. There are three medicines in that. No, no, it has been uh, sold patients around this medication. Yeah, yeah. For treatment? For the treatment. For the treatment, yes. So, NACO is provided? Not NACO. No, the NACO price, might, uh, might. might. NACO is because the cost is similar to what NACO is producing in the market. And less toxic? Both less toxic. No suicidal price. tendencies. And better uh, this adherence will be better. But the patient has to buy it. Yeah, yeah, some if uh, patient, they develop suicidal ideation. I was to elaborate for PrEP. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> So the two type of prep. One is a daily prep, and one is an episodic prep. Daily prep is for those people like sex workers or MSM, those which are in day-to-day -day sexual activity. They must take daily. Those which are going to have once in blue moon affair, they can take four tablets. One tablet to be taken twelve hours before sex. Two tablets at the time of sex. Twelve hours after the sex. So per sex, four tablets. And with this, they also prevent. 95 to 98 percent of HIV infection, but, but they have to take other precautions for other STDs because what happens is the moment we publish about PrEP, they're taking PrEP and they are exposing and they're coming back with syphilis or chancroid or gonorrhea or herpes and we're getting those kind of patients. They saying, sir, I'm taking PrEP. PrEP is only for HIV. Just take I just want to doctor, that yeah. these are to be taken by the HIV negative people yeah, yeah, yeah. who are not infected. Pre-exposure. Yeah. Another clarification. 
application of these four, four uh, doses, um, one before and one after, that's really only shown for men who have sex with men. It's much less forgiving for women for a variety of reasons. For women, for protection, they need to have, as uh, the doc first said, a steady state. So you have to have it on board for almost a month, and then you have to have it every day. Only then can you be assured of protection. But I'm quite interested about the subdermal medicine that you spoke about. Yes, so it's, 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 all there. All in it's all in the research. So, so ma'am, where will it be uh, given? At it is a plant, you mean not an injection? It's yes, it's it's inserted just underneath the skin. Oh, okay. And it's left there for three it months. It's a slow form. release formula. It will be for what form? You must have heard it's like plant, plant, it's a, for pregnancy it's prevention. A like an implant for okay. contraceptive implants that you get. Okay. It looks the same. It's really tiny. It's a few millimeters in width and a few millimeters in length. And it's very easily inserted by primary care uh, providers. And uh, so it's under research at the moment. And, the, and it's, it's affordable. Eventually it will be affordable. Yes. The advantage of an implant five, ten years compared to an injection is that once you give an injection, you can't take the drug out. So if somebody has a serious side effect, the drug still stays in the body. With the implant, if, if somebody's reacting or has side effect, you can take that implant out. So that's, that's a, a major advantage. It's a major advantage. So so huh? uh, two, three. If the combination comes to around 4,000 rupees a month. You get a lot of studies on this. Many, many, many studies. Are you advocating for NACO to provide it to patients? WHO has advocated it. What she said is right. Yeah. If it's above and below, everyone says that NACO might do it. No, All it's only a question of, <laughs> see, when you talk about NACO, you must leave, think of it as a government organization. And in government organization, anything has to come new, it will take one and a half years. Because the proposal has to be approved, then it has to be procured, then it has to be distributed. So you have any idea of how much Indian population is on this? Subject? No idea. Uh, can I interrupt, please? We have some online questions because people are streaming in from outside because this room also. This so I think we need to take, two months take some of those like, questions actually, as well. Let's see questions for online. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, Beryl, can you ask your question, please? Hello, Beryl. Beryl Lucindo is from Kenya, so she's here. Beryl? Hello, uh, Miss Bobby. Yeah. Um, uh, I wanted to know. Can you have the best possible yeah. reason why you Hello. Yes. Yeah, I wanted to know uh, any steps that uh, India is taking to help uh, African countries overcome the pandemic. Um, this world of that, uh, okay. Hello. Sorry, Beryl. Yeah, go ahead, please. Um, now that uh, most Africans seek treatment in India, especially when uh, it comes to cases of cancer and uh, TB. Yeah. So, so that uh, most Africans can stop going to the UK to get uh, training on uh, issues such as HIV and AIDS. Is there, is there anything there is doing? All right, okay. Uh, Beryl, I will just read it, read it out to you, to the experts here. Just hold on. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Sir, Sir Beryl Lucindo is from Kenya and she's asking that uh, I couldn't agree more on Dr. Gilada's and Dr. Glory's perspective on the HIV pandemic in Africa and the advancements made by India thus far. My only concern is that Africa is taking strides a little bit too slow. The continent can relate closely. Sorry. The, con uh, the continent. I need to do my the continent can relate to India in terms of seeking medication, particularly for cancer and TB. Instead of offering treatment all the time, I would like to know if India can or is already partnering with African organizations to provide training opportunities on HIV AIDS management to ensure that these solutions leave sustainable impact. Thanks. Uh, thank you. It's a very nice question. We used to do that between 2000-2005. When no organization was involved, WHO was not involved, 
Clinton Foundation was not there. Uh, PIFAR, that is a uh, America's President program, was not there. But after those program came in, then we withdrew. But if there is a need uh, from AIDS Society of India, our expert will be more than happy to provide that uh, on a timely basis. Whenever the, there is a such invitation, we'll do that. Sure. Some of the staff members from St. John's have been involved actively in conducting training programs for medical personnel in uh, Kenya and in Uganda and in Nigeria in 2010-2011. After that, the programs have stopped and none of us have been involved in that. No, that is because uh, the funding became very less and therefore there is nobody to pay for transport and things like that. We tried it with telemedicine, but after some time, again, it failed. Now we don't do any of those things. I think there's some other question also. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Rahul, I see your hand raised. Can you ask a question? Hello? Hello? Hello. 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 Can you hear me, Bobby? Hello. Hello. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Uh, um, hi, hello. I am Rahul, and I would like to thank uh, all the panelists for. Uh, such a very astronomic session and informative sessions. And I would like to know uh, why the male condom use is uh, so low in all states in India every year. And how can we increase uh, the use of existing prevention options for unintended pregnancies and STIs and uh, prevention of HIV? And also uh, the, the, the new uh, HIV Prevention Act, which has been um, uh, uh, no, uh, adopted by the, uh, in India and how how, uh, how we can uh, ensure that uh, it is uh, being implemented and uh, uh, particularly private health institutions are complying with this, okay. uh, this, uh, this guideline. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Rahul. And uh, other people uh, who are online, please uh, uh, do let me know in the Q&A box if you have any questions for the panelists. Thanks. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thanks. So the question is that the male condom use is very low and what can be done to increase the uptake of existing prevention options? Why male condom use is very low in all the states of India? Sorry, sorry. Um, so obviously if condom, male condom uh, use is low primarily because men don't want to use it. And um, I think we can still continue to speak about the condom. I mean, that is one of the safest way to both protect oneself from HIV, sexually other sexually transmitted diseases, and also prevention of pregnancy. And yet, I think um, sex is not a disease. Sex is also for pleasure. And so that also intersects with how sexual diseases are um, treated and are, are acquired. And so, yes, I think uh, you can certainly have social campaigns to encourage use of condoms. It's certainly a lot less um, um, costly. But at the same time, uh, it depends on negotiation between partners again. So it depends on both partners being willing to use condoms when, when practicing sex. Um, other prevention options really are um, other than safe sex, which is using condoms, as Dr. Gilada very early on mentioned, monogamous relationships where the two partners are HIV negative. And if one is to um, in, in get involved in risk, that is uh, sexual risky behaviors, then really other options are mostly either pre-exposure prophylaxis or if you are uh, in a relationship with a HIV positive individual, to ensure that that positive individual is on treatment because undetectable viral load is the safest way to not have it transmitted to the HIV uninfected. Any question? I have one question. I come to all the panelists. Sometimes I feel, okay, we say HIV is a manageable disease, treatable. Is it making us more complacent in our attitude towards the disease? Many times, oftentimes I have a 
oh it's just like diabetes you you remain on the drug and uh, you are you are fine is it making us more complacent seeing that the new infections are still there they are coming can i can i just answer what i have heard um certainly in the united states um and i think in many parts of the world in addition to the fact that it is a sexual disease it's also usually at the crossroads of marginalized populations poverty um a lot of people who who may end up being vulnerable to hiv don't have a roof on their head don't have food on their table so uh, yes you will hear a lot of people say you know i have five other things i'm going to worry about first getting a roof on my head or making sure my child has eaten food or or getting a job and yes if by engaging in sex uh, risky behavior or for whatever reason i get hiv at least it can be treated but i need to take care of things that i don't have solutions to so i don't know that it's complacency necessarily it's certainly no nobody wants hiv nobody's being complacent but it is an i think it's a, a unfortunate truth in many parts of the world that those that are most vulnerable to hiv also are vulnerable to so many other societal and structural challenges my comment is that we've seen a reduction in hiv incidence globally unfortunately there's still 2 million new infections that occur each year for us to break the back of this epidemic we need to reduce it to under 200000 uh, per annum globally a lot of the efforts have been on treating people making them undetectable and preventing transmission from zero discordant relationships um there is always a risk of complacency and there's a huge push towards new we've heard new innovation innovative techniques to to stem transmission the one thing is we cannot take our foot off the pedal we cannot stop the work we're doing we cannot stop the advocacy we cannot stop um ensuring people who are positive get onto treatment and are undetectable that the education messages go out there new preventive options are being researched that becomes easier to adopt but at the core of it it's behavior change which is notoriously difficult with its hypertension diabetes hiv etc so i think the the research around innovative approaches for prevention has to continue because we need to make it um almost impossible to acquire hiv infection which is a goal that we all should aspire to so i i think that uh it may be that 5 10% 20% difference is there when uh, something is become manageable treatable people are surviving people become complacent but more so people are coming out of closets like after section 377 has been repealed more and more people are coming out it doesn't mean that more people are becoming uh, msm more people are having any anal sexual activity but they are not coming out so when they are coming out we think that no no because of a lot, lot of people are uh, doing that so probably that the people are becoming open they know that with hiv they are surviving they see the other examples of the well survivors they see the examples of children with hiv born with hiv they are now becoming adult and some of in medical college engineering college uh, getting job so more and more people are coming out earlier uh, even we used to face problem and say that acha theek hai kyu test karenge humko kuch dawai to hai nahi na kya na do fir so now there is a medicine now there is a medicine which gives them full life therefore people are coming out uh, sometimes husband was positive wife was never not even getting tested for 10 years 15 years now they are getting tested they said that we cannot afford treatment of one person uh, why should we get tested there is not, nothing available but now they are coming out so that way some numbers will increase but uh, one question you which you asked me earlier the government's program initially started with uh, just trying to find out whether there is a problem or not then doing some training then coming on prevention in prevention intervention with the high risk bear population like sex workers etc then treatment came in and that time treatment was becoming focus now currently care and support has main focus and viral load doing is another focus so we are losing the focus on prevention we are losing the focus on intervention so those intervention activities which were started uh, they collapsed last 4 5 years 10 years and they may not take up again so we need to 
when we are going to the next stage it doesn't mean that we should abandon the previous stages and that's what is happening and we are trying to the location of funds or the assets by I mean, see uh, uh, basically what uh, problem is in india is that we always look at somebody else to come in uh, why we need billion millenda uh, are we not equivalent of billion millenda in india that would be true in the last I, 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 since 92 when the world bank loan was taken by government of india i said why do we need world bank loan World Bank loan comes with its own condition. Employ our people, consultantly from World Bank. Machine should be bought from America. Kit should be from America. Why should we need that? And at that time, we took World Bank loan. We gave up a lot of donations which were available from bilateral agencies, and then people became the donor dependent. The donor dependence is such a yeah. But best thing which has happened in last ten years. Uh, from the previous government to this government slowly 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 we have taken off all the loans and uh, incubators on the our indian national program now 92% of the program 90% of the program is run by government own fund and when we are going on mars on one hand on the other hand we have a beggars bowl give us you are giving to africa why you are not giving us it's such a wrong thing we don't need we 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 fail we fail to tap our own resources we fail to tap our own industries Uh, Bill and Melinda came, and they have been felicitated. Why not Tata, Birla, Amani, uh, Adani? They, they should have come forward, but nobody comes forward, and we we failed. We made a, a great failure on tapping those resources, and we were just looking at other donors. And second problem with big big foundation like Bill and Melinda, the 50% of money goes in the only top four or five people's salaries. You know how our their salaries are in crores. So actual ground level reality. there was one publication in which for fortune magazine you know, or some magazine they said that that hardly 30 40 percent goes to actual program 60% money goes to top official and mr express and to carry on with the, what uh, dr gilada said remember our first art program was totally by the government there was not a single pay from any donor agency and that was in 2004 and when pfr came the government did not accept any money for that this thing so we can we have resources only yeah i'll come to that no <laughs> before I, i haven't forgotten your point now coming to complacency see as far as patients are concerned there's not much of complacency but where i find complacency is in the medical professionals the number of uh, younger people who are getting involved in hiv aids work is coming down he will bear with me and this year we have given 50 scholarships to rajiv gandhi university to demo uh, demo uh, this thing uh, nominate their students to come and attend the post graduate students in different specialties free, free. Free, free attendance free attendance for this conference how do you tell how do you tell this has been for and vice chancellor huh? for uh, we asked uh, rajiv gandhi university to nominate 50 people and i am not sure post graduate students so that somebody will be interested in doing hiv work so for ngos also you have you know which are, no this is medical no yeah. see if the treatment is there it has to be medical so how to the point in this thing we are not asked activists so, or ngos who no i have no uh, idea dr how many from rajiv gandhi for scholarship 50 out of 50 one, one. one scholarship for attending to this conference we provided free registration you come and attend all meals covered you be here for three days you will be given certificate of six uh, credit no, that's points that's called a scholarship for the conference okay only for the conference only for the conference, conference to gain to, knowledge to gain knowledge and by that interest there is one or two among the interest yeah because now you say oh, what is the big deal we can always write the medicines it was not like uh, when we started we did not know what to do patients were sick so we are all in the same generation, <laughs> generation. See, we all covered our lives with hiv needs 20 years ago because we thought india is going to be the next flashpoint after how much is required to even attend the conference three day conference yeah but this is taken care of the same yeah what is the problem but uh, that's what i'm saying complacency among them is interest and this is not something that uh, dr gilada will bear me out any time a conference has been held in the last 5 6 years people have to go around hunting people to attend the conference there is complacency among okay do you think in that way there is so much stigma towards the conference no 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 it has just become like a, something normal you wouldn't go and attend a conference on cold you know that type of fanatic job basically what they think that even if i become hiv expert am i going to earn so much no 
Why should I do? There is no procedure in only it's only medicines and follow up and talking. Now uh, coming back to your question, see in the ERT centers, when you register the patient, you do two things and three things actually. Like you said, other card is taken for their identification or some other. Has that got people to ERT centers or has it moved them away? That's a difficult question to answer because there are no research that has shown whether their people get upset about it and all that. The second thing that we ask is to give their phone numbers. Third thing we do is we to bring them someone else who will be there to take yeah, care of them, okay. either a family so, member or a friend. Address, phone number, and the yeah. or caretaker. caretaker to come. Now, over a period of time, we also have sent SMSs to patients to take their medicines, come for checkup. And what we have found is about 20 to 30 percent of the people after two three months will just block the number so that becomes a problem and similarly trying to contact a person also produces problem you cannot send a health this worker i am talking about ERT centers we have the st john's was the first private medical college i mean yeah. institution yeah. which had which had an ERT center government run ERT center yeah. in 2005 so there, I'm talking about the problems that we have. And you cannot send a health worker to go to there because stigma is there. There's, there are 200 link ART centers and 64 ART centers in the state right now. Maybe, yeah. yeah. No, link ART centers are different from ART centers. True. Yeah. Do you think that's enough to cover the 3.5 uh, lakh HIV burden that we have? I mean, I'm not a specialist in that. I cannot tell you whether it's... But what they have is most of the ART centers are overworked and understaffed. And the link ART centers do help? They don't make much of a difference. No, It only uh, reduces the people coming to the ART centers. The ART centers are for medications free or are they... Are it's totally free. Totally free. So then what, are, what do you think that, that you know, that at least that differs from much more? No, that is just your uh, the general behavior of the population. Of if anything comes free, we don't know that. People uh, usually it happens in the past six eight months. So what is it to take treatment like long? So what is the difference exactly? Link ART and ART. Have the ART being provided? ART is being provided by the ART centers. Link ART centers are which are I'm, uh, exact definition, I'm not very sure, but it is used to take care of patients who have co coexisting diseases. Like, for example, TB. They need ART, they get link ART center, but it's applied that. But they haven't made a difference. <coughs> I mean, it has made a difference, but it's not as much as we want it to be. But you think your. I mean, your officials, each and also their It's not easy, and it also produces stigma. Problems will be there. And the other thing is, we do not have economic means to send healthcare workers. If somebody for Bangalore, because instead of coming to. That stigma, facing that is probably better than not No, the patient's object, no? That is the problem. It is not that. Health workers are this yeah, thing. It's the patients who object, saying that we do not want you people to come here. And then they say, no, we do not. We'll go to the private sector. And it's the same thing in the private sector. And they'll say, we'll go to the common sector. Don't you think there is a lot of dependence on these networks? Like you have the KMB. They cannot think of their lives independently. No, there are certain people who have got into this network who cannot think. But majority of the patients live a normal life. They go about their work, they go about their duties, and they are living a normal life. I mean, they have segregated housing. Even in, uh, facilities provided by people like Rajiv Gandhi Housing Corporation. They live somewhere outside the city. No, I mean, most of I, I deal with a lot of private patients. Nobody makes any difference. See, you must understand one thing. You know, like when you have patients who are coming with HIV positive, it is how this person has related with the family. If the person has not cared for the family for 15, 20 years, he is away. When he becomes sick and he comes to the family, nobody will care for him. But if the husband and wife is there, by chance the husband becomes positive, the wife will care for him. Or the wife is sick, husband will care for him. So it is mainly based on this family dynamics that takes place. 
and it looks very nice to say you know patient got you know especially for press people patient served so much he did this and all that and last minute he was thrown out in the streets and he died when you look at it what do you say yeah, patient also didn't look after family family right? so how do you expect the family to look after him but, when he is sick uh, by that all definitions uh, in india family support is fantastic fantastic, fantastic. Hey. if it is fantastic then the caregiver should have got the person back to the area is correct you know it there are a lot of no, other no, things no, no, that see, take place uh, <laughs> you see uh, i'll tell you the current therapies which are we are using in private are very good the government uh yeah the center has to use something which is cheap and uh, can be procured in large numbers and distributed everywhere and simple program that a should get this medicine b should get this medicine no third medicine but we have different options one of the medicines called ifavirens that gives you depressive thoughts uh, uh bad or good dreams drowsiness in the morning a driver if you're driving he cannot get make a judgment he can make an accident suicidal ideation when those days other options were not available so we are not even exploring ye aapko khana hi padega so people will say okay if it is not suitable they not not used to it and they will not come back but now the medicines are safer one of the medicine earlier they used to give buffalo arm and after taking medicine for some years they used to get uh, cheeks going in buffalo arm arms becoming big uh, uh, this become thinner so called lipodystrophy lipoatrophy then they say we went there and we become disfigured now those medicines are not there some medicines were there by which they used to get always tingling numbness buffalo hum at the back and quite big one so we don't have such cases no no now the when we see there. only the older patients who come with the same thing that has not disappeared and it comes a stigma no yeah. there were reports of shortage of nevarapine in the never happened there's one of them the story will answer that because never have been shortage no 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 it is just commercial i think all of you should to new born children uh they need to take it for 6 weeks so it works out to 1 to 2 bottles per child and we give it across the board to all children who are born to hiv positive pregnant mothers depending on the treatment the mother is on um this is not commercially made it's made only for the government to take it and therefore for other organizations to get it it's a little difficult and in the private sector it's quite difficult but then uh, we approached the Karnataka state aids prevention society and they immediately supplied it to us actually because they know we are working in the field so they gave it to us and then they also gave us the name of the pharmacy from which you can buy it so we went and we bought it from there but there was a time so when it was extreme it's coming in the form of a tablet also right no that is for she is talking about prevention of mother no, to child to you are talking about, about adults yes the short hair that is given to the youth one child that's the one which went out of oh. stock the tablet which we give as one of the art complications yes. that is that's available that initially when the medicine was changed to never been there was so much of resistance among the patients No. no i think what you say is yes. for no, a long uh, time huh. the government of india as a public health policy gave single dose nevarapine huh. yeah. to pregnant mothers uh during their labor yeah. as a method to prevent mother to child it was effective in the sense that it was able to bring down the risk of transmission to around 10% but what happened is because nevarapine is such a long half life Uh, there is an innate resistance that develops in a large number of people who take it. So late, and those days, because it was a single dose, the mother didn't take any more treatment. Later on in her life, when she required treatment for her own health, if you give her nevarapine, she it has not only developed. And not only nevarapine, even if you give ifavirenz, it will not work because it's the yeah, same class. Because they both belong to the same class. So what do the private sector patients do to prevent when in such situations arise? Actually, now more or less the entire PMTCT program is taken from the government, and it's everybody gets three drugs. <coughs> gets these, one uh, drug in, uh, yeah, uh, these uh, you know uh, HIV infections which keep happening due to watched uh, blood transfusions, which are totally preventable. Will you be discussing it during? The yeah, uh, there will not be much discussion because now blood safety is all over the country. Okay. After uh, 1998 Supreme Court judgment, 
I filed a public interest litigation in 1989 in Maharashtra. Yeah. Maharashtra made it compulsory immediately. But all over the India, it became compulsory in 1998. Since that time, HIV testing in all the blood bank is compulsory. What they are trying to innovate now is uh, using the uh, fourth generation kits where you can detect HIV as early as possible. So that window period transmission can be also prevented. So we don't discuss that much because uh, hardly 1% risk is remaining from that. Okay. Is it's less than, I mean, the latest statistics is in earlier days, we had a movie called Agmar Akbar Anthony. Mother was in between. Blood was coming from Amar Akbar Anthony and going directly in the mother. That was only in the movie. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, what he says is right. A lot of blood banks, they were, they were not blood banks. They were drawing blood from X. To checking and giving to Y without maintaining a blood bank. And these were considered the holy cow that we are preventing so many deaths because of uh, blood quantum blood. blood. Now that is not allowed. So all this thing is taken care of. There is one particular case in Karnataka. Uh, uh, hospital, uh, private hospital in a place called Davan, which is the state of Africa. Uh, in the last uh, six months, there have been two cases one of a pregnant lady and one of a uh, patient with cardiac ailment. They both were found positive, false positive uh, for HIV. And in both the cases, in, in the cardiac case, there was no permission taken to test him for HIV. He went there with ailment, with, with typical chest pain. But he was found positive and the, um, they did no treatment for him and he was asked to get discharged and all. Later they realized that he was not positive. So by that time there was a lot of stigma that affected this family. Now they have found out that this is a fault on behalf of the lab in the hospital. And the government is asking the concerned officers there to book a case against the hospital under KPM. KPM is Karnataka. Um, Private medical is that. Fact. But that act is such that you can register your private hospital based on that act, but you cannot take any action against them for these kind of uh, loopholes. No, they so did. There is so much a gray area on, uh, you know, that there are two cases wherein the lab went wrong, one in a pregnant lady case, also, similarly. But uh, do you think now that we have the HIV Act, the hospital can uh, be so in the, under HIV Act? There will be three crimes which will be registered against that person. But there is no one who is ready to, you know, who is well in this case in Karnataka. Do you want to take the case? I will take. And we have taken one in Goa recently. In Goa, uh, they, in a Goa medical college, they put on a stand HIV positive on the stand. And you know, stand. IV stand. IV stand. You run IV flow. And we took that case. After Dominic D'Souza, I fought that case in 88, 89. After 30 years also, same thing is repeated. So what you are describing was there were three crimes. One is testing somebody without knowledge, oh, yeah. without consent, at that person's cost. You are not even bearing that cost. Secondly, the, the, most of the private nursing homes and hospitals, they made it, made, it, make, made it a rule to test everybody for HIV. And they called it triple H antigen, like HIV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C. Mm -hmm. That is first crime. Secondly, if they are detected positive, you are withdrawing treatment, yeah. there is a second crime. crime. Yeah. And thirdly, the test which is a false positive, there is a third crime that you are not even double checking before somebody is reported. Yeah. Because you are giving a label for lifetime. So they should double check before reporting. And actually, triple, triple check. check. No, as for the... The government is to work on these patients and work on the government is bothered about their own survival. See. They are sending officers to DHO saying take action against the hospital and the KPMF. But she is trying because she knows that this act will not cover the... No, no. See, the, the thing is, when NACO guidelines on testing is very, very strict. You need to do three different ELISAs before declaring a person as positive. Okay. So now in the private hospitals, what they do is they are not bothered to diagnosing the disease. They just want to protect themselves. They do one ELISA. Say it is positive and declare the person so, as positive. Purpose of testing is what? Purpose of testing is to help the patient or to help yourself. yourself. Or to help that your is the problem. That is a problem. So you have to do three tests before you declare a person as positive. As in you want to repeat the test. No, no, no. The same sample is tested. You get a sample, test that sample. If the test comes as positive, you use a different method. Okay. okay. Second test. If that again becomes positive, you would use a third different method what to test. Second, first, first, no, that depends. Antigens. If, if two are negative, third is not done. Okay. If two are positive, third is done. No. If one positive, one negative, third is done. That way.
<laughs> yes, I think uh, I thank everybody for coming, and you are most welcome to come to the other days of the yeah. conference. Uh, we are 